Okay, now we're standing in front of a tree that is a, it's quite a different situation. This is a tree that is very vigorous. Okay, this, this would be an example of a tree that is not calm. Okay, the tree has been growing vegetatively. It has a very light crop. Even though this tree can be very productive, this individual right here is growing too vigorously and that means that it does not fruit well. That is completely opposite of what we're trying to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with this tree again in order to get it calmer, to calm the tree down and to bring this tree into a vegetative state. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to bring in the sides a little bit. We're going to tip these, or actually shear these sides in close. We want our tree to be maximum about six to eight feet thick across the width uh, between the rows, okay? So we want to do that, and then we will come in, and when you look at a tree, your tree is going to, uh, your tree doesn't talk to you, but your tree will, will indicate to you where you need to make your your cuts and this is very important you have to use your saw in order to remove wood out of this canopy the wood is where the nitrogen the vigor of the tree remains so if you just do pruning and remove leaves and do not remove wood you will defeat your own purposes here so we have to get inside this canopy like this and we have to remove some of these branches. Now, me standing right here, I know, I can see that this branch, that branch, and a third branch over there is extremely upright grower and will become very difficult to control. It, it will tend to be overly vigorous as the tree goes. So we have to work again at getting this tree under control. So, as we come inside here into the canopy, we look at this canopy and we see this is the branch that I want to get out of here. I want to remove this again because the idea is this branch is, is maintaining all of the nitrogen, so I want to remove some of the vigor out of this canopy. So I have to do that by removing wood. The other thing is this is the most upright part of the canopy and I'm trying to maintain height. So this is the branch that you want to take out. Now when you make your cut, you have to make your cut, this, it doesn't take a big saw. These trees here are five years old. We make it our cut like that, and then we remove this branch down. Now this branch that I just removed right here, like I pointed out, this has I've taken out a, lo a, lot of the, a lot of the vigor out of this canopy by removing the wood out of here. This wood costs you, okay? The leaves right here, these are the, this is the, the factories for the tree. This is what produces your sugar. This is what produces all of your fruiting. This is what produces your ability to make mangoes, all right? The wood is a necessary evil for a tree but you want to minimize the wood the best that you can. Now we're also going to remove this branch and mulch it off-site so that we don't end up sending this nitrogen right back to these trees. Again, we're trying to lower the amount of vigor in here, lower the amount of nitrogen that goes back to these. So that's the one branch. Now as we look in here, we still see that there is still some, uh, some big vigor problems. Now I am even going to take out this branch right here. All right, there's no set rule to what branch you're going to remove. You have to, this is where a judgment call for experience in pruning and knowing your trees knows very well. This tree is a tree that has a, a capability of excessive growth. In other words, it's a tree that you have to work a little harder to maintain size. It's a standard size mango tree. So I'm not afraid to remove this whole branch because I know this tree will replace this canopy very, very rapidly. So again, this time, I, since I can hold the tree, I don't have to make an undercut on this because I can hold this branch and it won't rip the bark. You always want to make your cuts leaving 
that collar, the collar that's right beneath this tree here, you don't want to cut into the collar. I cut, now you can recut this and make it a very flush cut if you wish. Um, in general, I, I, I'll still leave this. It won't cause any great harm in this canopy, but uh, it could be a little closer than that. So again, I take this branch out of here. Now this one, this one even removed more, uh, more wood and you can look actually at the hole it opened up. It allowed light inside this canopy. Um, this is what, I'm, uh, what my objective is. I'm not trying to make an open vase tree. I'm just trying to replace the canopy over a four or five year period. So in other words, in four or five years, the main limbs you see in here will be different limbs than are here now. Okay, so we remove that. Then, what I told you from the very beginning was we have to take out our clippers and this part is, I want to continue to maintain the, the, this canopy relatively thin in terms of a row. So now, this is more, this is where you shear these branches, okay? It's more indiscriminate. I'm not paying a great deal of attention to my cuts. I'm just working along here very rapidly, like this. You can also do this, remember what we said before, you do this when you want to harvest your fruit because now I can harvest these fruit, put them here in the basket, and continue on. The other thing to be noted when you're trying to make a sheer face to a tree, remember that the top part of the tree is going to grow at a faster rate than this lower skirts of the tree. So, you have to then come in and make sure and cut these higher parts of the canopy back in a little bit like this. So you make a bit of an angle going in. Now commercially, they cut trees with machines like this. You have one great advantage when you're cutting with your hands is you can be more selective. You can make the canopy more ragged Okay, ragged in this sense is a good thing. You don't want uniformity of a wall. You want to have these holes, this entrance of light into here. So there's, it's a great advantage when you do this by hand as opposed to doing by, uh, by machine. Now, I can already see from here the other cut that I have to make within this canopy. So I come right in here. And again, I make my cut, harvest my fruit at the same time. And I put the fruit in the basket, remove the branch to be removed later, and so forth. I go on around the tree, I do the same thing. Then I will come up now into the middle of this tree. Ipa. I just got smacked in the face by a branch. <laughs> Make a nice little cut there. One more cut here. Now remember what I said. We're not making, these aren't peach trees. So we're not trying to make an open vase tree. So I left this branch right down the middle like this, which is okay. But I'm gonna now take it and I'm gonna tip it a little bit. Like that. Okay. Just tip all these branches inside here. And then you proceed to the other side of the tree and do the same thing. 